how much of this code do we need to change to completely and utterly destroy every single well security ideal that next has ever had if nato is not a conglomerate of uh, like-minded liberal democracies what are we standing up uh, for why aren't we uh, building the railways from from piraeus to budapest why is that china the number one question was uh, do you have uh, established uh, democratic control over armed forces how do you bridge the gap again between the idea of freedom and the idea of uh, protecting your own space The world has changed in, 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 in these 10 years, um, and Europe has changed. And uh, the, the, the threat of our freedom order uh, has never been uh, as pronounced or as, as clear as it is now. China is, is um, trying to present an alternative to liberal democracy, uh, to the free market. They're not, that, that's not a hidden agenda, it's something they're openly saying. Um, and um, it will be very difficult to, to proponents of, of liberal democracy when, when um, regimes like China can, can offer uh, social security and wealth at the expense of democracy. And the problem is just what I mentioned yesterday, is that authoritarian regimes, closed societies enter and exploit the weaknesses of open societies. So they played by different rules. So that's why I think a higher level of cautiousness is needed. I confronted this when I was working in, in, in Africa, advising governments and, and leaderships over there, seeing how the Chinese are actually competing over there with European enterprises understanding that they're making a huge amount of their profits from being able to penetrate our market, right? And then being illoyally competitive in, in Africa. And European companies are losing out on the businesses in Africa because the Chinese have evolved, developed, uh, got richer because they have access to our markets, but our companies could not grow because they did not have access to the Chinese markets. This is absolute abuse of our openness to our own detriment. China, on the other hand, uh, I believe, is using the Western Balkans as a test balloon for everything they might be doing uh, in, in, in the European Union uh, later. So if you look at the security cooperation that um, uh, China and Serbia have, for example, um, they now have a lot of surveillance cameras from Huawei in Serbia. Um, there is uh, some sort of agreement between the, the Serbian uh, government and the Chinese government, I understand, about security. Um, this also covers uh, surveillance measures. It is not open to the public. Nobody in Serbia seems to know exactly how many of these cameras are there, whether they have face recognition software, where they are, and what is happening to the data collected. Well, unfortunately, things haven't been changing much uh, since 2017. At least they haven't been changing for the better. Uh, the um, Russian invasion in Ukraine is uh, still very much ongoing. Uh, Crimea is still occupied. Part of this sharp power game is that uh, they want 
Russia wants the West to talk as much about Russian interference as possible. Why? Because it makes them stronger than they are really is. So Russia is a country that has the size of the economy of Italy, even a bit smaller, uh, and also its military capacity is about tenth of what the United States has. Um, uh, at the same time, we can see, and we had some polls on that, that uh, the electorate tends to overestimate the power of Russia, even in terms of, of military, even in terms of economics. And I think this is partially because of that we have the tendency to see Russia everywhere. And they want us to show, uh, show them uh, everywhere. Russia is basically using the Western Balkans to keep the European Union busy and distracted, because it's easy. Um, they don't need to spend a lot of money in the Western Balkans to, to interfere with, with media and public opinion. It's easy because they're building on foundations that have been there for a very long time. Uh, the Russian Federation has an edge in this area no other power can have. Now, why I have this, guy, this guy's picture? Does, does anyone know who this is? First name, Valeri. Second name, Gerasimov, very good, thank you. Of course you know that. Uh, well, Gerasimov is here because um, he very clearly reminded us uh, with his article and speech that is later referred to as Gerasimov's doctrine that military escalation, military conflict is not the only way. And actually, in many European countries, and I would argue also in the United States, we have seen attempts to to undermine this uh, society, uh, not with military tools, but with something else. The easiest and perhaps also the cheapest w way of actually getting uh, some country to do what you want would be uh, to find a way to corrupt the politicians or, or cor corrupt uh, the decision makers. You don't need tanks if you can get the politicians of the country cooperate without that. very much struggling to counter disinformation and I think disinformation is very dangerous because it has a strong potential and it does already divide our societies and it creates mistrust towards our institutions be it political institutions or societal institutions like doctors or academics, science. This information exploits uh, the gaps, uh, the disinformation campaigns, the actors especially linked to the uh, Russian state-led uh, media organizations or accounts on uh, social media, they do exploit the vulnerabilities that uh, exist in the context, in the society that they're targeting. The Prime Minister himself is spreading conspiracy theories on George Soros and how he wants to bring migrants to Europe to destroy nation states. This is not only about external actors that are trying to divide us, this is also very much about us. So if I tell you that your partner is cheating on you, your response will mostly depend on the level of trust that you have towards your partner. So if our citizens believe those lies that Russia today or others are telling them, this should also make us think, why didn't we manage to infuse more trust into our own citizens? What is very important about this information is that this information spreads way more easily in environments where there is no media freedom and there, are no, never, there is no pluralism. Viktor Orban embraced this kind of politics. Why? Because he wanted to introduce an illiberal regime and it was the way to do it.
competition of values instead um, as it was before, um, a competition of economies, of firms, of different services. The adversary are not US firms that want to make money. The adversary are illiberal regimes that take over cyberspace and um, our data and uh, implement or use them for advancing their authoritarian rule. And this is what we need to consider when we talk about cyberspace. War in the cyberspace, uh, I strongly believe, will have much bigger damage on our daily lives, on the sovereignty of our states, uh, on our freedoms, than the actual war in the, on, in the theater of, um, of war. When it comes to cybersecurity, uh, sooner or later uh, we touch uh, the intelligence community, and it is making things even more complicated. Uh, not only from security perspective, but for uh, uh, liberty and privacy perspective. I don't know, I honestly don't know which governments can uh, listen to my phone and which cannot. I'm quite sure that there are quite many that can. I don't, the, the best secret is not the phone encrypt, encryption, I'm sure. The best uh, way to keep my message secret is, is sending them in, in Estonian because, you know, it's not so easy to, <laughs> to understand. There is never an absolute security, so we cannot trade our absolute privacy for no guarantee of absolute security. In the cyber security world, things are changing every two, three weeks. And if you are not uh, upgrading, if you are not improving your cyber security system uh, with the same tempo, uh, you will never be up to date, you, you will never be state of the art. We will have to address uh, very difficult questions, ethical questions, uh, questions of our political order, questions of uh, who should have what powers, and uh, that will be a completely different uh, type of, of challenges that we have never faced before. Societies that uh, want to be free need to invest in security. Digitalizing certain public services does make your country actually safer and not more vulnerable to external threats. The trust is very important and the majority of, 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 of the region here is not trusting. The trust in digital is very much linked to the trust of the government or democracy or rule of law in this uh, uh, society. And I th think this is very liberal uh, finding that we come up with. Authoritarian regimes and authoritarian leaders in Southeastern Europe, uh, I think, do more and more uh, to educate the public about the risks of, of, uh, for interference. Yes, you can see that there could be much more done, uh, but it's a, there are steps that are steps forward. I think this picture is pathetically beautiful. It's a Serbian activist uh, who used some uh, face painting to avoid uh, being recognized by the Chinese face recognition uh, cameras. Now I'm, you know, I'm optimist. So I, I, I don't, I don't like to see the. the I'm, I'm, I'm never talking about the worst scenario. I would like prefer to talk about the best scenario.